Hi, my viewers and my readers, uh, welcome once again on my scientific blog and scientific channel, uh, Discover Social Sciences. Uh, so, as some of you might know, I am pursuing now a thread of research, which I hope to transform shortly into a book, uh, on the role of cities and urban development and urbanization in our social change. Uh, the book, or that uh, thread of research, is directly inspired by, by what I can observe now, namely by the fact that the pandemic, that COVID-19 pandemic, seems to be impacting uh, cities much stronger than the countryside. Cities, uh, those densely populated places, uh, are both much more prone to the spread of the virus. Actually, uh, the, the, the most cases of death due to, uh, to the SARS-CoV-2 virus, uh, they occur in cities. And in the same time, it is the economy of cities that seems to be the most affected by lockdowns and by all that uh, panic. Uh, that uh, results from that new pandemic. And uh, so that's the general thread of thinking I am pursuing. In this update, I am uh, a little bit exploring new paths. I will uh, say a, a few words in a moment. Uh, for the moment, now um, a short reminder for new viewers. Uh, this video or this channel of videos is coupled with a scientific blog, with a blog with written content. The general title, the general name of the blog is Discover Social Sciences. So, uh, if you go into the description box under the video, you will find the link there, discoversocialsciences.com. If you click on the link, it will take you to the website of my blog, Discover Social Sciences. And there you can find a written update which has the same title as the title of this video. This is how it is coupled. So now I am going into the subject matter of that specific update. It is one of those times when I, are, when I uh, ask more questions than I give answers. I focused more specifically here on uh, the aspect of connection or on the connection between cities and the social roles and the creation of new social roles. Those of you who have been uh, following me for some time know that I have uh, like a strong claim that uh, social roles are idiosyncratic and individual rather than uh, typical categories. So the concept that we have of social roles, like being a doctor, being an engineer, being a scientist, it is just a simplification of a social reality which is in reality, which is much more complex and much more made of idiosyncratic, local, individual singularities. Uh, and in this update, I explore essentially two paths. First of all, I uh, do a little bit of review of literature regarding a topic which is sort of in fashion now. It is called the social neuroscience. It is the connection between neurophysiology and the latest uh, empirical research in neurophysiology and social behavior, social structures, social systems. I found a few interesting things. Uh, essentially, uh, it seems that life in cities or the way of life that we have in cities can uh, produce very deep and possibly even durable, very durable from generation to generation. So deep and durable uh, changes in our neurophysiology, even at the level of expression in our genes. Eh? Uh, it is one of the threads of literature I am exploring in this update. It is quite a fresh one. It is called epigenetics. And in epigenetics, there is a strong claim that uh, environmental factors can strongly impact the expression of our DNA. So essentially the same 
genotype, the same DNA can produce many alternative phenotypes, so many alternative expressions under the impact of environmental factors. And this difference or this discrepancy in alternative expressions of our genes can, I can say it ten, uh, tentatively on the basis of the literature that I have read, so that change in phenotype can occur even during the lifetime of an individual. So I am born with a certain genotype under the impact of the environment that I live in as a child, uh, my genotype expresses in the form of a certain phenotype. But then, if I am placed in radically different conditions, if I am placed in a different environment, if I radically change my way of life, the phenotype, so the way my DNA gets expressed, can change too. I can literally transform into a different organism, partly a different organism, during my life cycle. It is what epigenetics uh, tentatively claim and it is very interesting. Another thing that I found out is a paper which seems to be sort of like uh, next to, to the mainstream of social neuroscience, yet it is interesting. It is a paper on the so-called adolescent uh, pattern of risk-taking. Uh, as you pro probably all know, when we are young, we have a greater uh, propensity to take risks. We have a greater appetite for risk. And then after, roughly speaking, the age of 25, uh, we tend to drift towards a different uh, attitude with uh, uh, more... Uh, let's say, more uh, adverse reaction to risk and uh, more prudence and in the same time more capacity to pursue long-term goals. As I read this paper on those adolescent patterns of behavior, I had the thought, in cities, in urban environments, uh, adolescents have much more opportunity to interact with each other than in a rural environment. It is a simple calculation. If you live in a city and you are a teenager, you can have like dozens of friends and uh, you can reinforce you and your friends you, and you and your, teen, and, and your teenage friends can mutually reinforce your teenage adolescent behavior. So you can mutually reinforce in you uh, that special pattern of behavior oriented on taking high risks in order to gain a high social position. In a rural in environment, it is not the same. In a rural environment, a typical teenager usually has just a few friends. So there is a, apparently less reinforcement of that specific pattern of behavior. And uh, the conclusion, the provisional conclusion that I have from the reading of that specific paper, which is, by the way, uh, referenced in detail uh, in the written version of this update. So after reading it, I have that thought that cities, by facilitating interaction between adolescents, naturally produce a social environment which emphasizes or which uh, stimulates to take risks in order to gain a higher social position. And it would be one of the neurophysiological mechanisms that uh, contribute to creating more social roles in cities that can be created in a rural environment. Another thread that I am developing in this specific update is uh, the thread of uh, or the attempt to combine the theory of epidemics, the so-called epidemic quantitative, uh, quantitative model, with the concept of collective intelligence, which I am, which I have been pursuing for more than a year, and I am trying to in this in the written version of this update, you will see an attempt from my part to put this connection between epidemics and collective intelligence into equations. An interesting question emerges uh, from that attempt, uh, 
and it goes as follows. If I try to put uh, the quantitative model of an epidemic spread into a neural network which represents a collective intelligence, I can reach a state of complexity um, of that collective intelligence when the introduction of a new pathogen, such as SARS-CoV-2, either leads to a revolution, like to a dramatic leap in, uh, in learning, or leads like to a standstill when the whole system jumps. Huh? The idea is that uh, here I am going into a territory which could be understandable for those who are familiar at least with the basics of digital neural networks and uh, for those of you who aren't, well, maybe you will get some understanding from it. In a neural network you have an equation which is called a neural activation function. Many of those functions, and among them a function which is uh, commonly used called a hyperbolic tangent, essentially uh, react very strongly to an increasing complexity of the network. In other words, the more variables are there in the game, the more variables are there in the artificial neural network, that specific function of neural activation, the hyperbolic tangent, produces like greater swings of error, greater swings of deviation from the desired outcome. So technically, with that activation function, you could have a neural network which essentially jams or, uh, or blocks itself uh, when there are too many variables and one more variable, so uh, uh, for, for example the epidemic spread of a pathogen, can block the whole system. This is, as I said, it is rather a question than an answer. It is an opening that I am trying to create because I am essentially trying to connect the phenomenon of urban development with the concept of collective intelligence. Okay, this is uh, my video editorial for today. Uh, once again, you can go into the description box below the video. In the description box, you will find a link, discoversocialsciences.com. When you click on the link, you will be taken to the, uh, to the site of my blog and there you will find an update which has the a written update which has the same title as this video so have fun with science and i wish you a nice day bye